Every time Annie and John were seen in the high street, people would look at them and you could hear them say, They are the two children that helped their mum by phoning the emergency services for an ambulance when she fell down the stairs. John and Annie had to laugh. Everybody was making such a big fuss over them. Their mum had fallen down the stairs. Yes, she was unconscious. And yes, she was in a bad way. But they did know she was still breathing and they didn't think they were doing anything brave enough to deserve getting a medal for. Annie was seven years old now and was becoming a proper little madam. In a nice way, of course. As like most little girls, pink is her favourite colour. And cuddly animals are her most favourite toys. She still loved her Sylvanian house, but over the years people had bought her more and more furniture, and the house was getting overcrowded. She had seen a Sylvanian village in the shops that she liked, and was seriously thinking of getting another house to make more room for all this extra furniture. She hasn't told her mum and dad yet. Being so cramped in the house made it difficult when the family had guests over for dinner. She sometimes wondered where she would put them all. John was growing up fast, leaving fairyland things behind and heading towards more older boys things like judo and football. He still liked his model railway trains, but these days he was also into real life trains as well. He knew all about steam engines and railway stations across Britain. Annie and John had got their dad to take them and their nanny and granddad to the bus stop near to the post office on his way to his friend's workplace. Here they would wait for the bus to take them all into town. John was thinking about getting a book from the library. He was getting older now and liked to read on his own. Annie said she just wanted to go along for the ride. <laughs> but Mum and Dad knew that she'd seen a new Sylvanian house and that very soon they would be told how lovely this house was and how much she needed it. How do mums and dads know what children want? They are parents, and parents know the signs, especially since it will soon be Christmas. Children, can anybody see a little puppy dog? The bus was about an hour late, because Nanny and Grandad had misread the timetable. Again. But it didn't matter, as Annie and John were busy practising for the talking race at the Olympics. Chatter, chatter, chatter they went. Here comes the bus, shouted Annie, and they all got on and settled down in their seats for another round of the Annie versus John Olympic talking race. Children, do you know what colour the bus is? Grandad said to Nanny, It's times like these when I wish I was wearing a hearing aid. Why is that? said Nanny. Then I could turn it off, said Grandad laughing. They were all waiting outside the shop when all of a sudden a group of boys came running out followed by a red-faced shop assistant shouting for them to stop. Unfortunately, she didn't see the shopping basket near the door and tripped over it and fell to the floor. 
The youths were far too fast for the shop assistant. She looked up as they fled down the high street, laughing and acting what they thought was very brave. They were pushing people out of their way, causing an elderly lady to fall over. But to all the people looking on, they were just four silly boys being brave because there were so many of them. A paramedic who was passing by attended to the shop assistant and made sure there was no harm done and the lady got up and said she was all right. John shouted to Annie, Annie, do you remember what we did when mum fell down the stairs? And Annie shouted back, Yes, I do. We dialed 999. Well then, can you do it now, Annie? Phone the police. Children, do you remember what John and Annie dialed? Annie was a bit scared that she might do it wrong, but remembered what the policeman had said when he gave them the medals. He said, always remember John, it's better to try and hope you don't make a mistake. Not to try could be a bigger mistake. Annie quickly reached into her pocket and got her mobile phone out that her mum and dad had bought her. They had bought both John and Annie one each to be used only in emergencies and this was certainly an emergency. So she dialed 999. A nice lady answered her call and said, Emergency services, how can I help you? Do you know what colour the nice lady's cup is, children? Annie was a brave little girl, and her fears quickly turned to excitement as she said, Some boys have been very naughty in the shop, and I want a policeman to come and tell them off. Can you tell me your name, young lady? My name is Annie. That's A-N-N-I-E. And not with a Y at the end, said Annie. The nice lady laughed and said, Very good. I will remember that. Where is the shop, Annie? Well, it's in the town where all the other shops are, said Annie, surprised at such a funny question. The nice lady smiled and said, Do you know the name of the town, Annie? Yes, it's called Selage Town, and the shop is called the Discount Shop. Do you know if that's in Bank Street? Yes, it is, because there's a sign on the wall. Are the boys still there, Annie? Oh no, they ran away very fast. Annie knew that while she was telling the nice lady the name of the town, and while she was still talking, the nice lady was transferring everything she said to the police station. Emergency room to Millstone Road Police Station. Over. Milston Road Police Station to Emergency Room, PC Warner speaking. How can I help you? Over. Emergency Room to PC Warner. There's been an incident outside the discount shop in Bank Street, Selage Town, that needs your attention. PC Warner told the nice lady that a patrol car was on its way, and the nice lady told Annie that she had done a good job and that the police will be with her soon. Thank you, said Annie, 
feeling very proud and grown up. John was still looking at the boys making their getaway. He was now in train spotting mode, noting as many things as he could about the boys as they disappeared into the next street. Suddenly, he heard the sirens on the police car which quickly rounded the corner and came to a stop just outside the discount shop where Annie was standing. The policeman saw Annie standing there with her mobile phone in her hand and said, You must be Annie. Yes, I am, she said. The policeman asked Annie if she knew any of the boys and she said, No, but my brother John was looking at them as they ran away. And she pointed to John. Hello, young man. Is your name John? said the policeman. Yes, it is, and I can tell you that they ran down this street and turned into that street on the left. Would you recognise them, John? Yes, I would. As they ran past the bank, I noticed there was a boy with black hair and he was wearing a blue shirt and grey jeans. He nearly fell over. As they got to Billy the Baker's, I noticed that another boy, who was quite tall, wearing a leather jacket, knocked down an elderly lady. John continued to describe the boys while the policeman wrote everything down in his police notebook. Suddenly, a message came over the police car's radio. Jack, we've got them. They were all in McBanger's burger bar. At the police station, the boys said that, as a dare, and to initiate them into the gang called the Wallies, they were to go into the shop and steal two items, and then to run away and meet back at McBanger's Burger Bar. As this was the first time they had done something bad like this, the police gave them a good telling off, saying that the next time it will be more serious. Because of their bad behaviour, the boys' parents, who were called to the police station, said that they would be grounded to the house for one month. They were also warned, very severely, that joining a gang for the purpose of doing naughty things was not acceptable by law and was definitely not cool. On their way home, Annie and John told their nanny and granddad about their adventures with the police and what they both did to help, including Annie making an emergency services 999 call. Nanny and Grandad thought the children were still practicing for the Olympics. Chatter, chatter, chatter. They looked at each other, roared out laughing and said, Well done, children. Children, can you see where John and Annie are sitting? We think it would be a good idea if we played the don't panic game, said Nanny and Grandad as they got to the end of their journey and the end of this story. Children, John and Annie want to know, do you think that Nanny and Grandad should play the don't panic game? And can you find the little fairy? This story is a message to all children. Do you know your address and telephone numbers? And could you phone the emergency services in an emergency, like John and Annie did? Remember, 
in an emergency where you require the police, an ambulance or the fire services, dial 999 and state clearly what service you require. Is it police, fire or ambulance? If you would like to read this story to your children or maybe get them to read it to you, click on to Don't Panic, the storybook.